Hello, I'm Angie Weininger. More than 80 years ago, Republican lawmakers introduced the first prevailing wage law. It was designed to stabilize and support local economies and prevent unfair bidding practices on public construction projects. Today, efforts are afoot to repeal prevailing wage in Missouri. But what is its economic impact? It's the subject of a second benchmark study at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. It's raising eyebrows about the repeal effort. We found that prevailing wage laws support a highly skilled and safe workforce, one that delivers construction projects in a more timely and efficient manner while enhancing the overall economic health of Missouri and its citizens. I am an open shop construction worker and repealing prevailing wage just makes it that much harder for me to be able to contribute back to my community. We need to have skilled construction workers in this state and the only way we can accomplish that is if they can make a good standard of living. Uh, we lose that standard of living, we lose our quality workers. UMKC examined more than 150,000 construction projects in 12 Midwestern states, including Missouri, from 2003 to 2010. It found that prevailing wage reduced construction costs, especially for Missouri's secondary school projects. On other projects, it had no significant impact on costs. What we found is that prevailing wage states have a much higher level of skill in all the construction trades. And in fact, they deliver construction projects at a lower cost than do non-prevailing wage states that pay a much lower wage. It works in construction as it does in any industry. The more highly skilled a worker is, he's much more efficient, he can do the job much more quickly. And while delivering greater efficiencies, the study found prevailing wage also supports middle-class families vital to Missouri's economic health. It found that repealing prevailing wage would mean up to $488 million lost in economic benefits as measured by lost income and sales taxes. It's not just the dollar, that has a multiplier effect. For example, the incomes of construction workers in Missouri are reduced, then they have less money to spend. And so that has a multiplier effect on other businesses. This impact spares no quarter of the state. Repeal means Southwest and Southeast Missouri stand to lose a combined $13.5 million in economic benefits. For St. Louis and Kansas City, it's a nearly $300 million loss. In Northeast and Northwest Missouri, the loss could exceed $2.1 million. Then we allow workers to come in from other areas, other states that may be substandard, maybe they're quality workers, but we have a lot of work that may not be up to what we would want to see. And then they come in, take our money, and go back where they come from and spend it. So none of that money stays in Missouri for our families, for our state to realize the gain from. If there's less income being spent in a, in a community, that means that the sales tax collections for the state and the counties and cities will be less. In addition, because incomes are being reduced throughout the state, income tax revenues to the state of Missouri will also be reduced as well. Open shop construction worker Matt Eft and his wife are raising their two children in Ozark, Missouri. A repeal of prevailing wage would severely impact his ability to support his family. Prevailing wage ensures a solid middle class lifestyle that the state depends on. It makes it a lot easier for me to uh, pay my bills, make sure I have groceries on the table, you know, give my kids healthy food, it keeps my daughter in ballet, my son's in t-ball. So it just really helps out on being able to make sure that I can take care of all that without having to stretch every dollar. The way of life uh, for these tradesmen, many of whom only work 12, 14, 1500 hours a year because it's seasonal work to begin with, would radically change. And so that means their standard of living changes, their ability to have insurance changes, their ability to put their children through school changes, the opportunities afforded their family, radically different. And that's what these laws have been put in place to support. Well, repeal of prevailing wage would substantially reduce the coverage of retirement benefits. And if those retirement benefits are not made, as we have observed in non-prevailing wage states, then they have no retirement benefits other than the safety net of Social Security. And so that burden then is going to fall on the taxpayers of the state in terms of increased public assistance and welfare. 
This would be a burden borne by taxpayers statewide as wages crumble, attracting unskilled workers from out of state. Missouri sees a glimpse of this future every time companies attempt to skirt prevailing wage laws. From time to time, unscrupulous contractors will tr enter into essentially bid rigging in order to win a project and then cheat the workers on the other side. That was the case when the Missouri Attorney General charged an Atlanta, Georgia contractor with fraud in its cleanup work following the Joplin tornado. Urban Metropolitan Development of Atlanta, or UMD, and project manager Jennifer Taylor each face 10 counts of felony forgery. You're cheating the workers and you're cheating the state because it, it means less tax revenues uh, that come to Jefferson City that are, is earned by the workers, and it means a lower standard of living than the workers rightfully deserve. And one of safety. Construction annually ranks among the most hazardous professions. Risk management is a significant concern. That's actually very important. When it comes to my crew, I want to make sure that they are safe and that they are working in safe conditions. Onto prevailing wage jobs, you do have a higher level of safety protocols that you have to abide by. Prevailing wage jobs uh, here in Missouri, you have to be OSHA 10 to be on a prevailing wage job. So you know the guy next to you has had the safety training, at least that you've had. This is a moral issue. There isn't an economic reason to repeal prevailing wage. We also know there's a whole list of negatives that go along with repeal that include the atrophy of apprenticeship programs. They diminish significantly. We know voluntary benefits stop being paid, so that offloads a number of costs onto the general public. We have no positives from repealing prevailing wage. We have a list of negatives, of which I would say the most profound is the fact that in states that have repealed prevailing wage, we have empirical evidence that serious injuries and fatalities have gone up. According to National Public Radio, Texas is now the most dangerous place to do construction work thanks to a business bottom line approach that relies on unskilled and undocumented workers. According to the UT study, one in every five Texas construction workers will require hospitalization due to injuries on the job. And it is here at Missouri's apprentice training schools where the value of prevailing wage is amplified. These facilities not only produce a highly skilled workforce, but one with an exemplary safety record. Well, Missouri and many other prevailing wage states uh, maintain extensive apprenticeship and training programs. And those programs are run by the construction industry in those states at no cost at all to taxpayers. And in fact, Missouri has a commitment to apprenticeship and training program, and they've been nationally recognized years after prevailing wage first became a stabilizing force for local economies, it has come under attack. But as the UMKC study documents, repealing it would hurt construction quality and safety in Missouri, not to mention the state's overall economic health. And it wouldn't save one dime on construction costs. To read the full UMKC report, visit umkc.edu. I'm Angie Weidinger.